surrender and be gentle. Let's get it on! Hands right and see it! Light strike! <laughs> no turning back! Come a little closer. Check it, check it, roll it! Hello everyone, welcome back. So, I have C6 Chevros. It took a lot of pulls. And having played her for a while, I can finally say with great certainty that Chevros really is THE pyro healer attack percent and damage percent buffer in the game. So far. But what I've discovered is with Chevy C6, her healing side is also really, really good. To the point where this once described by me, not good for Farina team's healer, is actually able to sustain Farina teams. I know. It's absolutely incredible. We're here with Chevy and Rational featuring Farina. Yes, the Farina. The character who traditionally likes running a team with a team healer like Baiju, Mika, Jean, etc. But prior to this week, I always understood that Chevrus was one of those healers who needs a lot of help with Farina teams. But I am glad to say that with Chevy C6, that is no longer the case. <laughs> yeah, it feels good. Now, before we continue, don't forget to like this video and subscribe because let's be real here, who the hell actually talks about Chevrus in any team that isn't Overload? Not a single tc -er, I think, has ever mentioned anything about this. And pretty much every video I've come across so far about C6 Chevrus only ever talks about strictly Overload teams. So I'm here to bridge that gap and fill that hole because God damn it, she's actually pretty damn good in overvape teams. And if you have even a remote inclination to investigate this a little bit further, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Besides, you know, it doesn't hurt at all. So, you know, do it. It gives me serotonin in the morning. We do like that. All right. Without further ado, let's get into Chevy's Constellations. So, we're talking about C6 Chevrous, but does that mean that all of Chevy's constellations prior to C6 are completely and utterly useless? No. She's not Bennett. <laughs> so, let's quickly apprise ourselves of what Chevy's constellations actually do, because it turns out that even though some of them are theoretically designed for DPS Chevy, or Chevy's personal DPS, they can actually be used to serve different purposes. And all you have to do is just think ever so slightly out the box in how to use them. Let's start off with Chevy C1. This gives 6 energy to the on-fielder whenever they trigger an overload reaction on a 10 second cooldown. Now because of the 10 second cooldown, this tends to happen about twice per rotation. But also because of how I tend to rotate Chevy around in my teams and how that all tends to work out, the first person to get 6 energy from C1 tends to be Shang Leng or the high from doing it a little bit properly. And that's amazing because as we all know, Chevy and C0 the higher, low constellation the higher, they are very, very energy hungry. They are massively ER pilled. So being able to restore six energy to someone like Shang Ling is massive because of, especially in Rational, because it means that we can actually use Shang Ling's burst whenever we want. We do like that. C2 has the first held skill shot trigger two chain explosions that also do some extra damage. Only the first one, and this the fact that it's the first one is pertinent to C4. I'll talk about C4 in a sec. Because they're extra attacks, it means they have a chance to crit. And because that because they have a chance to crit, it means that if they do crit instead of your first held skill shot, you can trigger Fabge. Meaning C2 is additionally useful as a support constellation for Favjing. Is Favjing a verb? C3 is additional healing. C5 is extra damage for those of us who have actually built Chevy for damage. Now, I haven't actually done that. So C5 is a whole lot of whatever for me. But if you've built Chevy for damage because you like musket gameplay, C5 is there for you. Now, C4 lets Chevy's held skill shot actually not trigger the skill cooldown if you happen to use it right after the ult. Now, this is actually critical. You may think, no, it's not for a support build, but it's critical and just keep this in mind, okay? Write it down. Keep this in mind, C4. That being said though, if for whatever reason you want to trigger the cooldown because let's say you're 
go on a swap to A and therefore you're not going to have a chance to actually use Chevy again and you don't want the cooldown of uh, her skill to be overly long, then tapping the skill after you've gone through your held skill will in fact trigger the cooldown. So you can, you, well, you basically have a bit of uh, control over that as well. And C6 means that if the on-fielder merely gets healed, they get a 20% pyro and electro damage percent buff for 8 seconds. Individual stacks, stacking up to 3 times, which means maximum 60% damage percent bonus if you're a pyro or electro character. And at the end of Chevy's 12 second healing duration, the team gets a fat heal. 10% of Chevy's max HP. We do like that. We are also going to be able to use Chevy's C4 to buff Chevy's C6, and I will explain how to do that in a second, okay? Don't you worry. Now, to some extent, you can also try to stay on your Pyro or Electro off-fielder, let's say Miko or Shangling, for a little bit longer. You will need to stay at least two seconds per stack to get at least, let's say, two stacks of Chevy's C6 for eight seconds, which by the way is a cup's worth of damage percent. So we kind of do like that. All right, let's get into it. We're back here with Chevy and the rational team involving Farina, and we're about to fight Snorlax. Now, this build that I'm using on Chevrus is going to rely very heavily on the Maiden's Beloved set. And before we continue, let me just say, the Maiden's Beloved set is actually pretty damn strong. I've been using it on a Medic Mona, and now I'm going to use it on Chevrus. I actually kind of do recommend at least getting one set of Maiden's Beloved because you may find very good use for it, especially if you're in World Level 9. Now, this set stipulates that the increased healing received part of the uh, Maiden's Beloved set bonus only lasts for 10 seconds, which is a little bit of a problem because Chevrus's skill lasts for 12 seconds. And on top of that, at the end of the 12 seconds, we have the gigantic fat heal, which we kind of want to be affected by the Maiden's Beloved set bonus. So, what is the solution? I'll show you right now. We're going to go up now against that particular Snorlax fat schmuck, I guess. I don't know. So, we'll do our usual shenanigans that you would expect out of all of it. And then, this is the rotation. Chevy ult into held skill. Into Shangling. Into a uh, Chevy tap skill or held skill. Tap skill is a little bit better. Because, like I mentioned, we kind of do want to just, um, we kind of just want to force that, uh, cooldown. And that is how we are able to see that final heal from Chevalier's C6 actually heal the entire team in such a way that we're actually kind of HP neutral, at the very least. Uh, for Chevy and Farina, two characters who have a lot of HP, they seem to be more or less HP neutral. For A and Shang Ling, who are not built full HP, they're not HP neutral at all. Their HP very, very positive. So we do like that in a Farina team. Hey guys, this is Kate the Editor. So I also wanted to just briefly go through how Farina's fanfare actually stacks up with C6 Chevy on the team. So as you can see, we're doing the same thing that we're doing here with Chevy. We're also making use of the uh, Maiden's Beloved set by actually doing the second skill. As we continue to go through, we're about to see a pop. There it is. 
And now you can see we have 50% incoming healing bonus. Now that's of course not just coming from the Maidus Beloved set of 20%, but also there's 30% coming in from Farina's Fanfare stack. So that is an indication at crowd level that we in fact have all 300 of Farina's Fanfare stacks at C0, by the way, because my Farina is still C0. So to that extent, as you can see, this Rational team achieves maximum Farina Fanfare stacking. Let's quickly get into Chevy's buffs, because if you watch any other video on Chevrus, chances are you'll come out of it thinking she's straight up unusable in any team outside of Overload. That is just simply not true. Let me explain. Chevy's best team is Overload. But the reason why her best team is Overload is because it does use all of her kit. This much is true. Because when you're not playing an Overload team, well, we have to talk about the Red Shred buff. It's 40% Electro Pyro Red Shred, right? Which means it only affects really Electro and Pyro damage, which functions as your Overload team. But on top of that, this is the buff that Chevy has that requires the team to be strictly Overload with regular occurrence of the Overload reaction if you intend to actually fight something that's, I don't know, somewhat tanky and you are going to take a bit of time. Which means if you play, let's say, an Arlequino team with Chevy, Sara, and your fourth slot is a character who doesn't have any uh, additional uh, Electro application, that character is useless. And so, yeah, that that that's kind of where that is. I mean, you, you at least with Arlequino, you can try and swap with Sara, so there is that. But either way, that's when things get finicky. So when you play, let's say, an overvape team like Rational, that is the only buff you actually lose out on. It's the Red Shred. Frankly, I'm not too worried about that because you still have the other two buffs. The first one is the attack percent buff. Now, this buff only requires a singular overload reaction to occur prior to using your held skill. You only need one, because that gives you the overload bullet, which as soon as Chevy fires the overload bullet with her held skill, well, suddenly all of your Electro and Pyro characters, they get the attack buff, and it lasts for a solid amount of time. So there we go. That's why if you play, let's say, an overvape team with someone like Sara, all you have to do is sort of coordinate between Sara and the Pyro characters in order to trigger uh, Overload once. That'll do it. And you can keep on going. And finally, we have the damage percent buff, which comes from uh, Chevy C6. This, of course, only affects the on-fuel, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, but they only need to get healed. They only need to get healed. You don't even need an Overload uh, reaction in order to make this happen. I can visually confirm that in a team that is exclusively Arlequino and Chevrus, merely tapping the skill of Chevrus to start healing Arlequino, who doesn't get healed during combat because it's Arlequino, you still get increased pyro damage bonus. And we do like that. Now, this is why I like playing Chevrus, not just in overload teams, obviously, but also in over vape teams. Because yeah, you lose out on the red shred, which is unfortunate, but if you didn't lose that, let's be real here, Chevy would be overloaded. <laughs> listen, if you're desperate for the red shred, uh, I will be looking into Shillin and Rational soon, and listen, I think that might be pretty interesting, so I'll be investigating that when Shillin and drops. By the way, you don't have to strictly play Rational i.e. right in national. There are other overvape teams that work pretty well with Chevrus. Chlorational works, Sinational works, although I feel like Seno prefers Dendro teams, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, C6 Dorational is also something you could potentially play. That should be A-OK -okay as well, especially if you're desperate for the healing for whatever reason. And uh, there's always a, a few other options out there. Furthermore, Arlequino and the higher overvape is also something I've tried to some level of success, particularly the higher over vape, mainly because you can actually heal the higher while you're on fielding with her. I do prefer running Miko over Sara for these kinds of over vape teams as the electro slot, simply because it, it, even though I mentioned you can do over vape with Sara, and as long as you trigger an overload reaction, you get the attack percent buff, it can get a little bit dank. 
I'm just saying it can get a little bit weird to try and get that overload but if you are able to do it which does require a bit of concentration and some uh, focus and skill uh then in doing so the higher and Arlecchino's damage shoots up pretty spectacularly so we do like that it's probably a lot easier with uh well after the second with the second rotation at the very least because you tend to cycle from Sara directly to your Pyro on field, i.e. Arlecchino or the higher afterwards, and that's how you can quickly get uh, an overload from that. Otherwise, Chevy, if you're playing with uh, uh, Miko as your Electro slot in an overvape team with someone like the higher or Arlecchino, for example, then Chevy would buff both your Pyro on fielder and your Electro off fielder with the attack buff at the very least. Okay, let's talk about building Chevy. Now, even though I was using a Maiden's build, you don't have to use a Maiden's build. You can get away with a two-piece, two-piece HP build, but let's compare. If you use Maiden's, you get way more healing, like way more healing. And this is to the point where you get HP neutral gameplay for Farina and Chevy herself, if not slightly HP positive uh, Farina gameplay with uh, and, and for Chevy as well. like. That's kind of pretty insane. On top of that, my Chevy build, at the very least, right, has single target ticks uh, of over 4k healing, and the team heal tends to be around or a little bit more than the 6k mark, so we do like that. Furthermore, uh, the two piece, two piece build though, it does have a few other advantages. So, first off, it's easier to reach the 40k HP cap for her attack percent buff, uh, and so therefore, you can focus on more crit rate. For something like Fabj. So I find right now, if I want to use Fabj, I stick to my two piece, two piece build. Uh, you'll end up with a slightly HP negative, I feel, I feel, uh, Farina gameplay if you play perfectly with your two piece, two piece HP build. So just keep that in mind. I've tried it in Abyss, and at the end of it, uh, Farina was slowly getting lower and lower in health over each rotation, so it kind of is a bit weird there. Either way, uh, focusing on HP and ER is pretty much the way to go. If you're running Fabs, then obviously you want some crit rate in there as well. That being said, keep in mind, you do have a lot of hits coming from Chevy's ult and her C2, so you don't need as much crit rate, but the more the merrier. There's also the question of the weapon for Chevrus, and for this purpose, I will speak on only three specific spears. Magical Girl, Fontaine Craftable, and Favj. So, first off, Favj is Favj. You know it, I know it, everyone knows it. It makes battery and shangling and the higher in overvape or overload teams significantly easier. This is known. Okay. Uh, the next one is Rifle Reward, the Fontaine Craftable. Now, this requires Chevy to be healed by herself, or anyone else, I guess, uh, in order to get the 16 energy at, at R5 every 10 seconds. Now, if you're not playing with Farina, this is actually somewhat difficult to do because the only way that Chevy can heal herself off field is with the final heal from C6. So I am not a huge fan of running Rifle Reward on Chevy only because of that. Plus, it has less HP than Magical Girl. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, but it's, six, it's 16 energy at R5 every 10 seconds, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then you have Dialogues of the Desert Sages, which is the proper name of the weapon, but I have been calling it Magical Girl for a very long time because look at the weapon, it looks like a Magical Girl star from bloody Sailor Moon, right? This, in my opinion, is the perfect weapon for her. Chevy automatically gets energy even if she's off field, just without any memes. Doesn't matter if you're playing a Farina team or not, Chevy gets energy right out of the gate. So that's really, really good. Plus there's more HP uh, as a substat than Rifle Reward. So we do like that for Chevy. The only problem is it's an event weapon. So if you didn't do the event, womp womp. Okay, now that all of that has been said and done, it's time. You want to see some overload action? I know you want to see some overall action. Let's get into it. Raiden Hyper Time. We're going to go up against Tulpa because that's where Shangling can shine as well. And this is with the two piece, two piece build that I talked about a little bit earlier. C2 Raiden 360 
thousand damage. Yes, the C2 Raiden that it took for me to actually get C6 Chevrus from almost scratch. I had C0 before, obviously. That's what it took for me to get C6 Chevy, the equivalent of getting C2 Raiden. to say is c6 chevy worth the primos it takes to get her and uh, let me remind you i ended up getting c2 right in while i was trying to get c6 chevy i think so because she's really really damn strong and you know as the only pyro healer attack and damage percent buffer battery for someone like shangling and bahia yeah she's very very useful that being said do keep in mind it took me a C2 Raiden to get her, so if you're not going to be committed to it yet, then it's not worth just half-assing it. You might as well just try and get her over the long run. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I did a mischief trying to get her. Now, we'll see if Mavuika can be a solid alternative, but there have been some incredibly suspicious leaks at the present moment that suggest that Mavuika is actually going for Shanglin's role instead. That's going to be a bit weird, but either way, we'll see what happens. I, for one, am hoping that Marvelika would be the first ever Pyro Sara, but we just don't know yet. All right, so until we see a, a, a Pyro Sara, Sara is the only Sara in the game. Now, I know Chevy Overvape is a bit of a foreign concept to a lot of people, so hopefully I've explained it really nicely and succinctly to some extent. 20 minute video, or oh, what the hell is this? If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if I get enough of them, then I might do a follow up Q&A video on this because I think this is a pretty interesting concept. Because that'd be nice to do, solve some of those mysteries. I now have a new love, uh, a newfound love for Rational the single best national team and it's not even a question at this point so there we go let me know see what all of this in the comments below how do you feel about c6 chevres let me know in the comments do you have c6 chevres i suspect the majority of you are going to say no but you know she is what she is and i've been really enjoying her let me reiterate you don't need to get c6 chevres for chevres to be really, really good she has been pretty damn solid, even at C0. C6 just makes her go overboard. <laughs> so yeah, let me, maybe I should have said that at the start, but let me be very, very clear. You do not need to, you know, go all out for C6 Chevy. Even though I did. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button and subscribe for more of Genshin Impact content. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Shines eternally! <laughs> <laughs> Sunday is only the beginning! <laughs>